Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And as a married couple, we are re-watching, scoring, and ranking all the Marvel movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, this is the last film so far in the MCU, uh, is Spider-Man Far From Home. And uh, after this, we're going to go on to the DC Universe, and uh, we got plans for, you know, other superhero movies, other franchises. Uh, we're just big dorks, and we love to, you know hang out together and talk about this kind of stuff. So we wanted to share that with you. And we're not limited to superhero movies. We are also looking at Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, um, maybe even diving into some TV shows like Game of Thrones. Yeah, but for yeah. sure. So what we did is we developed a scoring sheet. Uh, one night we were driving home uh, on our long journey uh, from work to home for like an hour away. And uh, we decided to, you know, we're like, okay, if we're gonna rank these films, Bethany said we gotta do it using a score sheet and we gotta do it, you know, legit. She gave us homework. All right. If we were in the Harry Potter world, I would be Hermione Granger. Yes, very much so. So. Uh, so we made that scoring sheet available to you down below in the description of this video. You can go ahead and you can download it or you can fill it out online and uh, let us know your score after you rewatch these films. So on to our review for Spider-Man Far From Home. So our first category is our lead male and lead female likability. For me, I gave MJ a score of two. I said grab a beer with her. I mean, once she's of age, of course. I gave MJ a one. I thought she was kind of boring in this. Uh, nothing, the actress is a very, very talented and she does great with what she's given. I just don't find the whole uh, counterculture just to be cool thing very interesting. I thought they had at least progressed in that. To yeah. Extent. They'd actually grounded it in something real. She actually looked up historical facts to go along with her I think this bridge is really cool because people were executed on it. So at least history gave, nerd right there. I am, but I mean at least they gave us something to go off of versus I'm going to hate what everyone loves just to be different. Yeah. Which is kind of how she came across in the first Spider-Man. So I give props to this one because I think they realized they have a very talented actress and they finally fed her a little something more to build her character on. For Peter Parker for Spider-Man, he stayed the same with me. I gave him a four. I want this guy in my group of friends. I also gave Peter Parker a score of four. Um, there's just no reason not to have this guy in your <laughs> inner circle of friends. Honestly, he's loyal, he's kind, he's honest. He's I mean, brilliant. He's brilliant. You know, there's just, where's the fault? <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't, you really can't knock him in any way. So definitely somebody you want to have around. So we're skipping our next category because it's, uh, we do hero bang ability and these deals with high school students. And so it's just not appropriate for us to do that. Moving on to lead male and lead female relatability. How much do we relate to these characters? For MJ, she got a one again. Um, I know some people like that, but I wouldn't exactly call them friends. MJ also got a one from me. For Peter Parker, I gave him a three out of four. Uh, so that is that I think it's the best part to me, at least I like to think it is. Um, last time I gave him a four out of four. I said I've always connected with Spider-Man and I have. Um, maybe it's just because he's not as bullied as much in this one. <laughs> I gave Peter Parker a score of two. I said it's not me, but it could be one of my friends or family. Moving on to our next category, side characters. Side characters. Oh, we gotta do it again. I'm sorry. Moving on to side character. Side character. <laughs> Can you handle this? Our next category is side, side characters. <laughs> she did it that time. Our side characters for this one are Nick Fury, Maria Hill, Aunt May, Brad, Betty, Ned, and Happy. Aunt May, once again, got a zero, and so did Betty Brant. Uh, I didn't find either of these characters. I think if you took them out of this film, I wouldn't miss them at all, and then nothing would happen to the plot, and that would just be it. Like, Betty was just kind of there to, like, give Ned something to do. I don't even care that Aunt May's young. I don't care that you gave me a different kind of Aunt May, but you just haven't made her, like, important or interesting. I think in every other Spider-Man that we've seen, whether film or comic books, and correct me mm. if I'm wrong, because I'm not the comic book reader that you are, um, Aunt May has been sort of like the rock in the family. She's been a source of steadiness, a source of wisdom, a Strength. source of empathy. She's in many ways the heart for Peter Parker. It's nothing against Marissa Tomei, but it's the way that they laid out this Aunt May in this particular franchise mm. that just seemed to make her very vapid and self-involved. Yeah, I agree. They've ripped out the essence of Aunt May. Preach, girl, preach. <laughs> I had a few ones, and they were Aunt May, Betty, Brad, and Maria Hill. I gave Maria Hill, Ned, Nick Fury, and Happy all a one. Um, I thought they were just there for the plot. Nick Fury's character to me, though, was the most interesting. I feel like Samuel L. Jackson played him 
as if Talos was playing Nick Fury. Because something oh, something seemed off about Nick Fury to me. He seemed to definitely have a, a drier sense of humor in this one. And yeah. be just a little bit more willing to sass back in a way that Nick Fury's often too the soldier boy yeah, and, to do. Yeah, and Talos kind of... It, it, uh, Talos sasses. I gave my twos were happy. Okay. Um, I really think that he was there to make... To make Peter more likable and redeemable in the sense that he reminded us that Peter's a kid. Um, all the superhero stuff and all the stuff riding on this kid's shoulders. And not even Aunt May seems to, to really realize, like, this is a kid who needs some nurturing, who needs some love, who needs someone to kind of shoulder mm -hmm. that weight with him. I only had one, two. And right now, this side character gets the high score. It's for Brad. In this one, Brad kind of plays the the bully role. Makes Peter Parker, I think, a little bit more relatable. Makes him a little bit more humble. Makes it seem like he's the, you know, not this good-looking kid that's got it all figured out. He's still kind of a little bit awkward. So I will go on to my threes, which are Nick Fury and Ned. Most of my laugh lines did go to Nick Fury. I think for Ned, it's not knocking first romance because we've all been there, we've all felt it, we all need it, and it's a necessary stepping stone. And it is really important when you're that age and you're in it. But once you get on to a more adult phase of relationships, when things like marriage and, and long-term romance and things like this are all coming into play, looking back on that is just really fun. And you remember how silly you were and how, how she ridiculous. Loves, she loves looking back at the, the good old days, before she met me, before she got married to me, when romance was fun and he had, you know. No, but I can remember when I, I think I was like 12 or 13 and I had a boyfriend. Slut! And somebody asked me, what did that mean? And I said, oh, you know, we hold hands at recess. Next up is villain. Uh, our villain in this one was Mysterio, aka mm -hmm. Quentin Beck. He wants to be the greatest hero on earth so that everyone will listen to him. Yeah, so he wants to be a superhero through causing destruction of his own that he can fake save. So, uh, how, how many people does the villain's end goal affect? Uh, for me, I gave it a three. I said it's a world's health and happiness that is affected by this. Yeah, I gave it a three as well. I said a world's health and happiness is at stake. How strong is the villain compared to the hero? Hmm. For me, I said he was a two out of four, which is, is he's equal to the hero. Uh, I thought that Mysterio, just one-on-one -on -one without all of his illusion tech, is obviously nowhere, can't compete with Spider-Man at all. Um, so he needs the ability of kind of like, you know, it's mind over brawn um, in this one. And so he's got to throw Spider-Man off um, because he can't fight him in a fair fight one-on-one. -on -one. So I said Mysterio was a score of one. Um, without all his tech, he's significantly weaker. Yeah. With his tech, he's equal. But Mysterio, the person, I was like, ah, I cut the difference and I said he was a little bit weaker. Do you care about the villain? This one, it was a tough one to rank. Uh, I gave it a four. I said, is it wrong that I kind of like the guy? I just loved the character of Mysterio so much that I gave it a four out of four. Is, that, is it wrong that I kind of like him? Um, I thought this was one of the best villains uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And so it was great to see him uh, in this one. I've been wanting Mysterio into a movie for a while. I wanted more of him. I wanted more of Mysterio versus Spider-Man fighting and like, you know, Spider-Man have to battle in the different illusions. I would have loved that. It's, I hope he's not dead. With Mysterio, I also gave it a four out of four. Wow, um, I'm surprised because you were really hating on him. But this is this is why I gave him a four out of four is because I think the people who made the movie did such a wonderful job putting us in Peter Parker's shoes. Mm. We feel for Mysterio. We have an empathy for Mysterio. We feel a big brother kinship with Mysterio right up until the betrayal. And then, of course, we hate his guts. I mean, because... They make us feel that so raw in the same way they make Peter Parker feel it. So uh, it's time for villain bang ability. Um, is it wrong that I like the guy? So if I like the guy, do I want to bang the guy? Um, this is I'm very curious. I'm very interested. As your husband, I would like to know this. <laughs> I gave him a score of one. Uh, it's it's yeah. not high. I mean, let's let's face it. Loki will always be the reigning king of villain bang ability yes. for now and forever. <laughs> I don't see anyone topping him in that category. So next up is plot. Uh, how engaging was the plot? How enthralled were you? Did it keep you on the edge of your seat? Eh. Um, so with this one, I said it was a score of three. It was deliciously unexpected. With Mysterio and the, the switch that he does, it really made it interesting. Agreed. I gave this a three out of four. I said it was deliciously unexpected. 
And even though I knew Mysterio was a villain and there was a twist coming, uh, I didn't know what, I still didn't know what he was up to. And that, so it was, it was cool trying to figure out like, okay, what is this, what, what's this game that he's going on to? Next up is female empowerment. What role do women play in this film? Uh, once again, not a lot of strong female characters in this one. Uh, they're usually just the damsels in distress or the cool hip mom. Um, but there's one saving grace, and that is Maria Hill. I gave it a one for that reason. It's uh, They helped the final outcome, but in a very weak way. I kind of expected you to give a shout out to Maria Hill. Okay. I gave this a score of three. Oh, whoa! Which what? is... Without a strong move from a woman, victory would not have happened. Yeah. And here's the strong move. Okay. MJ picks up the little flying drone thing that Mysterio has been using. And had she not done that, we might not have unraveled exactly what Mysterio was doing and how he was doing it. So I don't know if that's a strong move. She just found something on the ground and she picked it up. It's a, it's a two out of four. It's not that. I'm sure we averaged it to a two out of four for the final score, so I'm not worried about it. Soundtrack. I checked off twice next to soundtrack, so that means I'd give it a two. It's uh, a couple of songs that get me motivated or pumped up. So I gave it a one out of four. I said that there are uh, there's one or two good tunes in there. Next up is humor. Uh, how funny was this film? I'm, di I'm disappointed. Spider-Man films should be funnier than this, um, and it wasn't. I got a 13. I gave it a score of 17. And I agree with you. I think that a Spider-Man film should be funnier than this. I think that was one of the really big endearing qualities of Spider-Man in the comics was mm -hmm. the fact that he didn't stop talking. And there was always something to kind of laugh at and enjoy with him, even in really big moments of battle or, or yep. you know, tense moments. He kind of broke tension by being funny. Next up is visual effects. I give this a score of three. I said it's definitely big screen worthy. Um, wow. I think that's in large part to the effects of Mysterio. I gave it a four out of four. I thought it was, uh, my eyes had a few eyegasms, and really, this, a lot of it had to do with that Mysterio illusion scene. It's not so much as, like, you know, they kind of like, oh, they took what I see in the comics and they put it on screen. Because, like, in the comics, it's not animated. You know, you're just seeing frame by frame, and so you gotta animate it in your head. So it's like they took the animation from my head and they put it on screen. That's how amazing it was. Next up is Love Story. Uh, the love story in this one is between MJ and Peter Parker. Now for me, I guess Love Story a zero. I said that it's just there because Hollywood demands it. I, uh, I, mean, I, I, I just, I don't know, I didn't buy it. So I gave it a two, which is, it's believable at least. And I think you're right. I don't think apart from some stolen glances from MJ to Peter, they necessarily give us a great reason for why MJ likes Peter. But I think as the audience, we naturally feel that in because who wouldn't like Peter? I mean, they got the incredibly good-looking Peter Parker. Like, they got this great-looking, like, young Leo DiCaprio from Titanic-looking Peter Parker. I think it was more important for why MJ, or why Peter likes MJ, because they gave us such a different MJ and a unique MJ mm. that we were kind of left thinking, why does he like her? She can be brash and sometimes rude and even a little obnoxious at times. Yeah. And, you know, like, what's what's the allure here? But he goes out and gets the Black Dahlia. He celebrates her for her differences. He talks about that. He gives us reasons for why he likes her. Next up is dialogue. So for dialogue, I gave this a score of one. It didn't take away from the film, but I mean, I can't really quote it very much. It was kind of... I agree. I gave it a one out of four as well. Moving on to action sequences. Now, we agree that there were four action sequences in this one, and I gave it a three out of four, which is that I couldn't believe what I was seeing in a good way, which makes my total action scene sequence score a 12. Same score, same reasons. Um, I really credit my score to Mysterio, which brings us to heart. I am the sucker between the two of us. <laughs> so I gave this a score of two. It got warm fuzzies. There were some cute moments. I still think a Spider-Man movie could do better, but it wasn't an abysmal score. Yeah. I think a Spider-Man movie does need to do better. I gave it a one out of four. I said it had a sweet moment or two. I think one of the really big important things that we're both happy about is that Spider-Man is staying in the Marvel Universe. Yes. He's staying a part of this franchise. Yeah. And hopefully Marvel will continue to have a strong influence over any Spider-Man films in the future for the franchise because... Like we said, when Spider-Man was in a Marvel movie, they hit it out of the park. It yeah. was spot on for everything that Spider-Man should be. When for a lot of what Spider-Man should be. I still don't like the, he uses Tony Stark's uh, kind of technology. So I kind of think that kind of diminishes his character a little bit. Diminishes his, 
diminishes his own brilliance and uh, his, his fighting techniques and his fighting style. He's the budget version of, of Tony Stark. You know, he doesn't have Tony Stark's money. He's a poor kid and... Uh, he might know. be the budget version of Tony Stark. But his film should not be the budget version of a Marvel film. Good call. That was well said. Thanks, baby. Let's move on to our final scores. So my final score for Spider-Man Far From Home was a 60, but it got a fist bump, so its total score was a 61 for me. I gave it a 75. No fist bump for me. Sorry. That's all right. It makes So Spider-Man Far From Home, final score for us was a 68. Go ahead and rewatch Spider-Man Far From Home and go ahead and fill out our scoring sheet down below. Leave your score in the comments. Or you can just tell us what you think about the movie in the comments below if you don't want to do all that. Our score was a 68. But that is definitely not definitive.